We follow our acronym. We say noon. That's right. Natural gas first. But we don't want to just turn on our gas. Why? <laughs> Huh? It's just kind of it's making a bomb. There. They're making a bomb out of the whole room. Okay. And normally we have these fans on. We're gonna go through that procedure probably tomorrow because we don't have. I don't think we're gonna have time today. But normally these fans are exhausting, um, but we always want to put spark before fire because if there's a spark, the combustible will ignite and it won't want to explode because it's become a flame, right? So if we're adding spark up here and then we add gas, it turns into flame. If we just turn on our gas, all we hear is the sound of death, which is the gas filling the room. So we always add our spark, 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 right in front of our flame, and then we open up just a little bit, and we get our little pilot. So that's the, the end of the no part. And now we've got this, and we want to turn it into something that can actually melt glass, which this can, just really skinny glass. So, okay. That's about a lighter. This is the only one that you can do this to. If you do that to once you add oxygen, <laughs> it's not a good situation. So that to say, once you have your tools, never put them in the front of your torch. You never want to cross, what's the Ghostbusters? Cross streams. You never want to cross the stream because that's the death zone. That's where you get um, really bad burns, okay? So all your tools on the side, and if you have something <coughs> in there that you need, you don't do that, you do this, or this, okay? This is the no hand zone, okay? <clears throat> so we wanna turn this flame into a working flame so that we can melt glass. So we open up our pilot to like six, eight inches, right in there. And then especially when your torch is cold, you want to introduce the oxygen slowly, so don't just blast it open. A lot of times that'll just blow out your flame. So just nice and slowly open up your oxygen. So watch when I do this, watch what happens to my flame. See how it's nice and wafty, yellow, it just dances lazily. And then as soon as I start giving it a little bit of oxygen, it'll start turning blue and becoming more direct, in particular up in the face here, see this? Oh, now my candles start to identify themselves. What it is, is I've got the gas coming out of certain ports, and then around that, those ports I've got uh, oxygen that's feeding the flame. It's feeding the gas, and it's making it a hotter flame. And when it feeds the gas, the natural gas, it becomes blue, it becomes hotter. So as I start bringing more oxygen in, it gets more blue, it gets more direct. It starts turning uh, more of a white flame and then it'll go where it starts to really define my candles here. And uh, this one is my center candle. And that's sort of my gauge that I teach, especially on these torches, how to define flame settings. So until this center flame draws all the way back down to my center of my candles like this, it's a, a reduction flame. So everything from just gas like this to when that center candle Reducing, 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 neutral. So it's a really big breath of flame that's reducing. And what's the crossover point is when that center cone 
isn't elongated and drawn out and kind of yellowy. When it starts to see that difference right there, can you see? Not really. So this is where being close benefits. If you see that center flame start to get a little lazy as compared to the surrounding candles, these little port, uh, these little blue lines are called candles. So the ones around the bullseye, the one in the center, should look just like the center one. When that happens, right there, I'm in neutral. Okay, it's still a little bit longer, but it's not long and yellow and uh, more transparent. Like I can see through my center candle. Well, I can see through the other ones too, but it's got a little yellow tint to it. So I want that yellow tint to be gone so that essentially my color is the same as the surrounding candles. This is really important, especially when you start using color because your color chemistry will react differently to your flame atmosphere. So an easy one is like, who's in chemistry? It's like Fe plus two, Fe plus three. So not to, do, to be too divergent here, but um, the acronym is OIL RIG, O-I-L-R-I-G. So oxygen, ion, loss, reducing ion gain, and that will determine what happens to the metal oxides inside of your glass that are making it be a color and not clear. That, because that is so helpful for remembering that equation. Yes. <laughs> That's correct. <clears throat> um, thank you. Okay, so we need to know what we're doing to our glass, basically, is the point. Okay, so when we get to our neutral, can you guys see that from where you're at back there? What's happening in particular? Okay, so just the, it's the nuance where neutral is actually neutral is extremely small. So look at this. Reducing, 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 neutral. Now, the end of neutral. That's how small neutral is. You can open those so that it goes out. That'll be more comfortable. Um, okay. So the, the window of neutral where I'm touching my dials is tiny. Look at this. Neutral, 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 neutral. Sounds like a song, like a neutron dance or something, maybe. You should probably record something to help everyone remember so uh, then we can play it in class. OK, so tiny, right? Look at that. I'm barely, my movement on my dial is not even from like 8.30 to 8.35. It's like 8.30 to 8.36. It's just, <coughs> just a, a minute. Thank you. Minuscule. Okay, and then when I cross over, watch what starts to happen. My center candle will start to become shorter, more blue, more pointed, hissier, because what I'm doing mechanically here is I'm opening the valve back here that's forcing, allowing more oxygen into the flame and that oxygen passing through the line is actually what you're hearing letting that oxygen go through it's the volume the velocity of that oxygen so see how we're in cold oxidizing right now i kind of skipped the regular oxidizing by just blasting through it so i've transferred into oxidizing how do i know my center candle, when it becomes the same height as the surrounding candles, is a dead giveaway. You're in oxidizing at that point. It's shrunk. It's become no longer in the neutral territory where it's the same color but a little bit longer. It's gotten shorter. The same length of the surrounding candles, it becomes bluer. It becomes more pointed. The flame sound is hissier. The actual flame itself becomes um, more laser beam and less wide, it becomes tighter, narrower, sharper. 
and it becomes less susceptible to, to draft. Like if there's um, if there's a breeze in the room, the flame will wave a little bit, and the more oxidizing it gets. No hand zone. Yeah, and then the no hand zone. Sorry. <laughs> the more laser beam precision <laughs> driving it becomes, and again, that's that oxygen pushing my flame forward. Okay, so you can see what else starts to happen is I've got gaps in between my ports because the if you guys look at the face of your torch okay just look at it on the oh you only have the center so if you look at the center the let me remember correctly I forget what the center is I think the cylinders the holes are the let me just look at it So the holes are the gas, and then the area around it is the oxygen. Um, why am I telling you that? Yeah, just as a side note. I was talking about a cold oxidizing flame. So when you look, when it starts to become spacing in between the blue, see those gaps where it looks like little hollow needles in the flame? That's coming through not the circle, but the area surrounding the circle is feeding the gas that's coming out, and there's so much of it that it, the flame actually can't combust the oxygen. It's an inefficient flame. It's actually cooling the flame down. That's why it's called cold oxidizing. So I've added so much, so much oxygen that it can't combust it, so it's lowering the temperature of the flame. We use that for soft, uh, what are called crayon colors, that can only handle certain temperatures and flame, flame atmospheres, basically. Some of them are very temperamental, just like us humans. You know, some of us can, we're fine until someone says the wrong thing. And these colors that are fine until you give them the wrong flame. And then they get angry by bubbling into a frothy mess. If you're too close to the flame or if your flame setting is incorrect, number of variables which we'll get into. Okay, so that's the cold oxidizing. So the oxidizing is about, okay, let's go back from the beginning. Reducing all the way to right there. See how that center candle is still a little bit long, but it's it's nice and formed. Um, it's not draggy yellow. See how that starts to get a little long and a little bit more transparent than the surrounding candles? So we go right there to about right there. We're neutral. Tiny. So you can just play with your dial and, and move in and out of that. And you should do that. I recommend it because you get familiar with what it's supposed to look like. And then when you go past it, your center candle becomes the same length as your surrounding candles. Your flame gets more blue, it gets louder, it gets hissier, until you then add too much oxygen and then you start making these holes of excess oxygen. That's our cold oxidizing. And then here it becomes more extreme cold oxidizing where if it's very small, Laser beam, cold, excess oxygen, evidenced by my holes in my flame. Yeah. Yeah. So green is oxygen and the red one's the natural gas? Thank you. Red is always gas. No matter what the torch is, red is always the, the thing that's going to make fire. 